Rickard's Bolotniks. Now, before I go on, I'm not sure whether his name is Bolotniks or Bolotnik because on BoxRec and the, the commentary on this fight kept calling him Bolotniks. But on his actual shorts, on his trunks, it said Bolotnik without the S on the end. So <laughs> did the S fall off? I don't think so because even his corner team, it said Bolotniks. So I'm not sure where, why there's this discrepancy <laughs> whether it's Bolotniks or Bolotnik. Anyway, he fought Jose Burton and he defeated him in Latvia, and Bolotniks is a Latvian guy, he defeated him on a 10-round unanimous decision. Now, this fight was very reminiscent of Jose Burton's matchup several years ago against Frank Bullioni. And by the way, big up Frank Bullioni. Uh, Frank Bullioni is a real stand-up guy, you know, on a personal level, real stand-up guy, real smart guy. So big up Frank Bullioni. And as I say, this uh, Bolotniks, Bulli, uh, Bolotniks, excuse me, Burton fight was reminiscent of the Bullioni fight because of the fact that it followed a similar kind of pattern with Jose Burton boxing on the outside and the shorter guy, in this case Bolotniks, but in the uh, aforementioned fight, or previously mentioned fight, excuse me, uh, Bullioni coming forward trying to apply pressure with Jose Burton boxing on the outside doing fairly well. You know, he was... I would say getting the better of some of the early rounds against Bolotniks because Bolotniks really wasn't very high volume. He was applying pressure, but there wasn't a lot of punches there. He would seem to be waiting for, you know, maybe his body shots to take effect or for uh, Jose Burton to slow down anyway as the fight progressed. And either way, that's what happened. Burton did start to slow down. Bolotniks was getting some nice body shots in. And then eventually he was able to pin Jose Burton on the ropes and start doing some proper damage. Now, all the way through the fight, Bolotniks was landing nice, clean shots. He's one of these kind of fighters who doesn't like to throw unless there's a very, very good chance he's going to land. You know, some fighters will throw throwaway punches, you know, shots that just set up other shots or shots that just keep the opponent busy or shots that confuse the opponent or, you know, uh, they, they use them as misdirection, etc. But with Bolotniks, no, he's a guy who likes to be economical, at least early on in the fight from what I've seen here. Likes to be economical and only really wants to throw if he's 80% sure the shot's going to land. But even still, he did land some clean shots, even in the early rounds, usually power shots, occasionally jabs. And gradually, gradually, Jose Burton started slowing down. And by the way, Tyson Fury, his dad, John Fury, and his trainer, uh, Javon Sugar Hill were in attendance for this fight because I believe Tyson Fury is related to Jose Burton. They might be cousins or something like that. And again, after big up the uh, wh whoever needs big up over there in Latvia, they had fans in attendance. Very few few restrictions. They even had ring card girls there. Always good to see. But more of that on Patreon. Uh, yeah, Bolotniks was applying the pressure throughout. And I think it was in the ninth round that th there were signs that Burton was starting to get broken down. I think in the seventh or eighth, he had his nose busted. Then in the ninth round, Bolotniks really got on top of him, put some damage on him and scored not two knockdowns, but two standing counts. Jose Burton didn't actually touch the ground, his backwards to the ropes and therefore the referee decided, well, I'm not sure actually what the rules were there in Latvia because Back in the days in the United States, uh, you would get standing counts and they weren't, they, they weren't predicated on ropes holding somebody up. No, these were just standalone standing counts where you wouldn't have even gone down uh, if you didn't have the ropes behind you. But because you're taking such a beating, they jump in and give you a standing count. Yeah, that was quite common back in the days in the 90s and what have you, especially in America. But in this instance, I don't know whether the rules in Latvia are like that or whether it is a situation where, as it is everybody everywhere else, if the ropes are holding you up and preventing you from going down and if they weren't there, you would have gone down, you're going to get a count. It's going to be counted as a knockdown. Either way, it's academic. Bolot uh, Bolotnik's got two counts over uh, Jose Burton and the fight from there was effectively over. Yes, it had been relatively competitive, for the first, you know, seven, eight rounds. 
But Bolotniks, you know, the momentum of the fight was more going in Bolotniks' favor. And the ninth round really sealed the deal. The 10th round was also a decent one for Bolotniks. Although, credit to Jose Burton, he fought back like a warrior in that 10th round. And he really tried his hardest, but it just wasn't enough. And the decision rightly went to Rickards Bolotniks. The commentator for the fight was a little aggrieved at how wide the scorecards were. And, you know, I can see that. It was always going to be a tough ask, you know, going to Riga in Latvia against the Latvian, especially when you're not a high-profile fighter and Jose Burton isn't. It was always going to be tough. So, yeah, I, I can understand why people may not be happy with how wide the scorecards were, but at the end of the day, the right man definitely won, and that was Rickards Bolotniks. So, yeah, this is a nice win for him. He's 17 and 5 with one draw, seven KOs. He's been stopped three times in the past. This is actually the first time I've ever seen Bolotniks fight. And he's pretty rudimentary. You know, there's nothing spectacular about Bolotniks. He looks strong at 6'1". He was shorter than Jose Burton. And he, as I say, moved forward. He was concentrating on landing quality rather than quantity, at least for the first half of the fight. And yeah, he just looked like a, a rudimentary but solid fighter. And this was for the WBO European light heavyweight title. I believe this is a a belt that Anthony Yard has previously held. Now, will this be an opponent for Anthony Yard? Rickards Bolotniks. I mean, it's the, the kind of opponent who they might put him in with next. And as far as Jose Burton, where does he go from here? This is his second professional loss. His first loss, obviously, to Frank Bullioni, as I mentioned. Um... What do you guys think? How far can Jose Burton go now? Is he found his level? Is this it? British level? And remember, he lost the bully. That was British title fight, right? Against Frank Bullioni, British light heavyweight title. So is Jose Burton only area level? Not even British or European level? You guys let me know what you think because you look at Bolotnik's career and I know records don't tell you everything about a fighter, but they tell you a lot. He shouldn't have been up at cruiserweight really, should he here? getting stopped by Tabiso Machunu back in 2018. He was stopped in six. 191 pounds. So I guess he's fought a few times at Cruiserweight. He, was, he also dropped a decision to Mickey Nielsen back in 2018 at Cruiserweight. A fight here at 180 pounds. So, I mean, this is above Cruiserweight. Okay, sorry, that's not the one he lost. He lost to Kevin Boval over six. And that was kind of a light heavyweight, and I mean, you look at the guy's record. And early on, he was stopped by Andreas Evangelou. He's a British, uh, I believe, British-based fighter, or British-born, but I guess is a, a Greek or Cypriot name. Uh, and Abel Mikhailin. Mikhi <laughs> I'm always butchering these names, man. <laughs> but he was stopped in three by him in his second pro fight. So yeah, very checkered record uh, that Richard Bolotnik has got. So not exactly the talent, you know, the biggest talent in the world, but he definitely had enough to deal with Jose Burton and give him his second professional loss. So yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments below if you managed to catch this one. You can actually watch it on YouTube. As I say, it was uh, streamed live by Sky Sports Boxing and also on AFL TV, I believe. They showed it and it was a decent fight to show. I did watch, you know, I, I was kind of on off watching some of the fights on the undercard, but none of them that I saw seemed particularly interesting. I was mainly waiting for the main event to see Jose Burton back in action. And yeah, Bolotniks gave him the business. Join me on Patreon. I upload a minimum of two podcasts every single week, covering a wide variety of controversial topics, as well as live stream Q&A sessions. Take a look on screen right now at some of the podcasts I've produced so far. For just $3 a month, the equivalent of about £2 a month, you get access to all my new podcasts and my entire back catalogue of past podcasts, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen on your computer or on your smartphone or tablet by downloading the Patreon app from the Google Play Store or the App Store for free. The Patreon app also allows you to download each podcast in MP3. For less than the price of a cup of coffee, you get access to dozens of hours of exclusive content. It's easy to sign up, there's no contract, and you can cancel at any time. So come and join our community of free and critical thinkers by signing up with me here on Patreon today.